topic today is Chesapeake Bay Health, what causes positive and negative trajectories. So as a brief introduction uh, to what STAR is, the STAR lectures represent the science, technical analysis, and reporting group of Chesapeake Bay program, where we are integrating between the goal implementa implementation teams and the various data providers. So STAR is, is, is facilitating the dialogue between those, and the seminar series is a way to uh, provide ideas and challenge uh, people to, uh, to be thinking about uh, issues related to Chesapeake Bay. So these lectures have a goal of providing concise, 15-minute, thought-provoking ideas related to Chesapeake Bay science and management. And uh, our rules of engagement is 15 minutes, which can be captured on video and posted on the uh, Ian website. And our videos are released under a Creative Commons license, so they can be freely shared and reposted on other websites. So. We're going to uh, encourage people to put their ideas out there that other people can share and, and discuss. So the idea that I want to present today is having to do with the Bay Health Index uh, that we've been developed uh, as part of the EcoCheck NOAA uh, uh, University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science partnership, in which we take three indicators of water quality, chlorophyll A, dissolved oxygen, water clarity, establish thresholds for those three water quality indicators, three biotic indicators, the aquatic grasses, uh, bottom uh, dwellers, the, the benthic index of biotic uh, integrity, as well as the phytoplankton index of biotic integrity, and combine these three water quality and these three biotic indicators into uh, uh, using these thresholds, measuring their ability to um, achieve their, those guidelines and then create a water quality index and a biotic index that we combine together into a Bay Health Index. And graphically it looks something like this. We get these maps of data collected monthly uh, from uh, 160 some sites around the Bay from the three water quality parameters and then mapping for the grasses that we do uh, with aerial photography and ground truth team, and then a separate set of mapping exercises and sampling exercises with the benthic and phytoplankton, combine this uh, uh, into a threshold comparison and generate these uh, combined indices. And then from these indices, we generate uh, a report card ranking. We use a numerical uh, 1 to 100 scale for water quality and biotic index, and we take the average of those and uh, then we plot those on a daywide map and we assign a letter grade based on a grading scheme that's pretty uh, liberal. Uh, we we, we um, uh, have 20 point uh, 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 windows for each of the different letter grades and you see a, a diversity of grades. And the thing that uh, struck us early on, and, and you know this bay is a very well studied bay and we have a lot of information, but this emergent properties that we started to see and looking at that, and I'll take two examples, the upper western shore with the highest grade last year of 64% of attainment of those, uh, from those six indicators, and the upper eastern shore. And they're physically adjacent to each other. They're, you can take a small canoe ride across and get from the upper eastern shore, which includes the northeast of uh, Bohemia, Elk, and Sassafras, and Chester Rivers, and compared to the upper western shore, the bush and the gunpowder, uh, and you see a very large divergence of, of those uh, scores. And so uh, this, this was uh, 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 somewhat perplexing, but, but what, we, um, what we also were able to do is because we established indicators that the Chesapeake Bay program had been collecting for uh, over 20 years, uh, we could back calculate those assessments. And when we did that on the Bay-wide scale, back calculate, we see that there's no major trajectory. It's, it's pretty much going up and down. Uh, uh, dry years and wet years uh, uh, are, are, are clearly uh, inf uh, influence the, um, the, the overall rankings. But, um, but there was no specific trajectory for the Bay as a whole. But when we started to look at the trajectories of individual regions, what we found, uh, lo and behold, was that there were uh, most of them 
them didn't have a, a, a significant trajectory, but, but several did. And for the combined Bay Health Index, we had statistically significant correlation coefficients that were positive, in other words, getting better, for the James River for the Upper Bay segment and the Elizabeth River in Virginia. And we had statistically significant negative trajectories for the Mid Bay, the Upper Eastern Shore, which I highlighted earlier, and the Lower Western Shore of Maryland, the, the, the Severn, the South, the uh, West Road, and uh, the Magothy. And, and, and quite, quite low, uh, high uh, correlation coefficients as, as well. So th therein lies the, the, the issue uh, that I want to address here in this, in this uh, uh, lecture. So let me just drill into two examples. And I'll go with the upper eastern shore. And, and remember, that was a, a, a significantly negative Bay Health Index. Uh, R squared of uh, minus 0.29, uh, devolving that into the biotic index, also 0.29, and the water quality index, 0.27. And you can see the water quality data in blue stretches back further than the, the biotic uh, health because we did, uh, some of these programs were only initiated in about uh, 1996. But you can see an overall negative trajectory from the water quality and then picking up with the uh, Bay Health Index. Uh, uh, so not only was this grade that we calculated 27 for one of the lowest in the Bay, but it's getting lower. So it's low and getting lower. So when you did the um, R squared, did you do Let's, um, I'm sorry, for so the whole time period for all, all of them? Were the, the R squared were, were, that we calculated were for the time period of record available. So. They were shorter for the biotic and, law and throughout the to uh, total time period. Let's have a look at what the Upper Eastern Shore watershed uh, is, is doing. And it's very rural. And it's, this is an a, a aerial photo of the um, uh, Sassafras River. And, and down here is an aerial photo of the uh, Chester River. Uh, there are a couple towns, uh, Centerville and, and Chestertown, but relatively small towns. Um, uh, up into uh, 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 Delaware and in, uh, in, the, in the far uh, northeast corner. Um, lots of uh, agriculture, uh, poultry farms, uh, and some forested areas up in the, in the top. So th there's no um, immediate uh, smoking gun for degrading, uh, continually degrading water quality up there. It's not a rapid growth area. It's, it's been this rural character for the, over the 25 years of record. Let's look at the Upper Western Shore, and this is, this is actually, didn't come up in that analysis of positive trajectories for the Bay Health Index. It wasn't significant, but it does come up for the Water Quality Index. You can see why it didn't come up as positive, because it's noisy. But looking across the, the water quality, the blue line is statistically significantly improving, and, and even though it's noisy, I think you can follow, your eye can follow that positive trajectory. These areas are, are that came up as the number one score in the 2008 report card uh, also comes out to be uh, 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 good and getting better. So let's have a look at what's going on in that watershed. What could be happening that's actually changing over 25 years to make it improve? That's a tough question. If we look uh, aerial photo looking at the Susquehanna Flats and down onto the mouth of the, the, the um, Bush River, what we see is Aberdeen Proving Ground, one of the largest uh, military bases uh, in, um, on the shores of Chesapeake Bay, which uh, uh, have a lot of wetlands associated with them. Uh, so there's a nice natural filter of, of salt marshes at the mouth of, of, of the rivers, both the bush and the gunpowder. So that, that's one part of it. Again, it's a largely rural character, but uh, it does have the I-95 corridor with um, um, Bel Air and, and other uh, priority, they call it a, a priority funding area. They have, a, they have a, a relatively concentrated growth. It's not a total sprawl throughout the watershed. And uh, the, the um, Two, two things that they've done there quietly 
uh, and efficiently are upgrading their sewage and, uh, more subtly, the, their um, uh, sewage overflow problems. So they put in infrastructure to improve their sewage treatment and their sewage overflow issue. And talking to some of the river keepers around the rest of the bay, that overflow <laughs> issue permeates a lot of the, the degradation that goes on. So I'd like to, uh, uh, we took Governor O'Malley up to the Bush River because he wanted to see one of the areas that were improving, and he asked a, a pretty a relevant question. Why are some areas getting better and other areas getting worse? And, uh, and, and so that he would like to use the answer to that question to help focus and prioritize where the, um, the, the trust fund and the, and the, um, the various cleanup uh, uh, initiatives that the state of Maryland is em employing to, to do that. And, and I feel quite inadequate in answering the question. Uh, we can talk about the different land uses, but it, these are trajectories, remember. These are things that are changing over time. So, you know, we got to, we've got to, and, and they're physically adjacent and, and yet have very divergent patterns, this upper eastern, upper western shore. And if we look baywide, um, similarly to James, why would the James be getting better in the Rappahannock languishing? Uh, they're, they're, they're physically pretty close and you don't see, there's no obvious uh, change in land use or, or uh, uh, BMP, uh, uh, Best Management Practice Implementation, that would, that would promote that. So this is a challenge. This is an open question. I don't have the answer. But I'm posing this question, and I think what I'm looking forward to is the discussion of what some of the possible answers to this could be. Um, for reference, I'll point you to uh, a paper in Marine Pollution Bulletin by Michael Williams et al., who, who uh, uh, has the data that you, um, uh, analysis and, and methodology of the, of the Integrated Bay Health Index, and the EcoCheck website which has the ability to go uh, region by region, tributary by tributary, and calculate uh, or, or generate graphs of not just the combined indicators, but the individual indices, the, the, the chlorophyll and the dissolved oxygen and the clarity that go into the water quality index, for example. So that gives you a chance to drill down and explore that. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, the team at the Integration and Application Network who have uh, been particularly the EcoCheck crowd who's been working at developing those, those tools and integration, as well as the Chesapeake Bay monitoring team for whom uh, received an A plus for, for their efforts uh, in, in developing uh, these report card uh, technologies and, and uh, communications techniques. And then finally, uh, we'll, we'll post this, uh, this talk and, and, and this broader challenge on this uh, website and, and do this for the series, this uh, STAR lecture series. So, thanks very much.